Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be joining us from. My name is Ed, and I'm all right, and I'm so excited to have you part of us today and to have you joining us for this amazing series, right? I must first of all give credit to one of our counselors that brought the idea, Lisa Express. She was like, wow, there's something in roots that we have not been paying attention to. And when I headed to that, I decided to go through it and I discovered that truly there are a lot of lessons we can learn from the book of Ruth that we are yet to master, that we are yet to understand, that we are yet to get. So as we would be starting this series today, it will be happening every Thursday, 8 p.m., all right, so it is every Thursday, 8 p.m. Nigeria time. And I want to encourage everyone to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so that you know when we come live. Every time we come live, you'll be able to know when we are live with the different discussions. We just want to see all the lessons that we can grab from Roots and see how we can apply them. And today, starting with us, this amazing series, this beautiful series is no other person than our very own Apostle. <laughs> Many people know him as Apostle, right? And his name is Matthew Femi Adedoye. In fact, he's one of those people I remember that would say, there's a way to write my name. My name is Matthew with a double T. And my Femi, you have to put apostrophe before the F. Mm. <laughs> and from there, we something before the family. Family is just a, a short, it's not a complete name. True, <laughs> true. So, and um, we have been friends for over the years. We've known each other through that you're somewhere. I think we've known each other since 2014, dear about. And I know him to be an amazing counselor. If you're watching right now, if you click on the description, you will see his full profile, everything that he is, and everything that he does. So, click on the description section now to know everything about him. But for us at the Arise Passion, we usually take the the external things we take more important are the things I'll be introducing, right? The internal thing is that he's a Christian and he's a human being. And he's a person who is always growing and developing. And developing himself and learning. The external thing is that he's a husband and he's a father. Those, those two things for us are the most important things than any other thing that a person can acquire or achieve in this life. If you are married and you are still married, if you... If you have a child, I remember one of his lessons on parenting. We say one of the best ways to be a parent or the first truth in parenting is not to have a child, right? If you if you have a child, and it's, it's a big deal. So for us at the All Right Fashion, we always take your marriage and your family first. Oga Matsu, Oga Apostle, how you doing? I just want to know I'm good. Um, it's good to see your face after a very long time. Uh, yes, sir. I'm not to see your face. Since before COVID. True, true, true. <laughs> Very. Uh, we just, okay. We just <laughs> yes, we just been chatting. And my beautiful sister. They are very fine. They are very fine. They are, they are following us right now from the parlor. And one of them have come to the door to be knocky and be like, Dad, knocky to like. <laughs> he wants to come in. I want to do everything to ensure that I don't take all of your time because I want you to just share with us. So the first question I would like to ask, what came to your mind? What was it that came to your mind the moment we reached out to you to say, hey, we have this particular topic we want to discuss on and we want you to be our you know starter package you know when you go for when you go for any event the starter this tells you had how, how, how the party will go so I'm like no we believe you you're the best person to start this series for us and with us what was it that came to your mind when you heard the topic no it was uh, first of all i can't have a privilege if i was to be the first person on the platform reaching out to me mm -hmm. And um, as somebody who value leadership a lot, I, I think I have numerous leadership Bible, NIV leadership yeah. Bible, NLT leadership Bible, John Maxwell leadership mm -hmm. Bible, and every mm -hmm. form of leadership Bible that they have been written. 
including mm. MFN, MFN Prayer and Deliverance Bible. You know, all of those yeah. Bibles. And um, I have carefully studied every chapter of some of those leadership yeah. Bibles. And the book of Ruth came to mind. So when you reach out to me for this topic, even though it's around the month, I went back to all my leadership Bibles. And <laughs> carefully studied leadership according to Ruth. Wow. Wow. And, and I'll see how the leadership is related to romance. Mm -hmm. and all of those things and i think um if time permits us we are going to unravel all of those loyalty integrity commitment in leadership and how it is going to help relationship and marriage also so i, I can't yeah, definitely it. it made me delve into study more and mm -hmm. read more i mean the things that i was unable to see before now because mm -hmm. i'm reading romance i'm studying the book romance according to the book of Ruth. I'm deliberately mm -hmm. and intentionally for studies that will help us in relationship and in marriage. Wow, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for that effort. Thank you for choosing to do that. You know, um, from yesterday, before yesterday, from Sunday, I decided to start paying attention more to the Book of Ruth. So one of the things I did was to go to my U Bible and I went to the uh, devotional and I searched out for everything roots all the roots devotionals and i started just following them one after the other i could not read because i was still working and i was still schooling and what i did was just simple i just used audio i put them straight on audio and i was just listening and following all the different devotionals by different people so sir let me give you the next 20 minutes i mean interject here rain and dear for the next 35 minutes but for the next 20 minutes i just want to hear you we want to hear you everyone watching us right now on youtube want to hear you what are the lessons for our relationship for our marriage that we can get from root chapter one from verse one to the end of that chapter um, first of all i'm not going to follow it uh, verse by verse. So, a, yes, a, a particular verse may come before the, the another verse. Mm -hmm. The first thing I saw in that book was that since time immemorial, mm -hmm. people have been looking for greener pasture elsewhere. Uh, so, um, the Japa syndrome we experience, we are experiencing right now, is not mm -hmm. just um, about us. If our research confirmed that. The Indians, the Pakistanians, the Japanese, more than Nigerian, despite, despite all our noises. The mm -hmm. Japanese, more than us. So, in the bid for looking for greener pasture, that was our route to go to the land of Moab. Now, let's go back to the Deuteronomy. Okay. Talking about, you know, it was said that the Ammonites and the Moabites, when the children of Israel were passing through their land, they did mm. not give them food and water. Therefore, mm. um, the Israelite women should not marry the Ammonites and the Moabites mm. Mm. because of water. Now, a lot of people will now say that uh, since they said they should not marry Moabites, why mm. is why are the children of um, Elimelech and Naomi married to the mm. Moabites? Now, in yeah. those days, Hospitality to a stranger is done by men, not women. Wow. wow. It's done by men, not women. Hospitality is done by men, not women. So, as the children of Israel were passing through the land, yeah. the Moabites and the Ammonites, the men were supposed to entertain them. Oh, you are passing through our land. To show you that we are hospitable, yeah. we are going to do this. Because they did not do that, Moses, this is not God's law. This is Moses' personal law. Then because they did not mm. do this to, for you. You, the daughters of Israel, don't marry their men. He did not say you, the men of Israel, don't marry their women. Don't marry their women. <laughs> I put people in my own personal culture. Yes. I'm a Yoruba man from Kwara State. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ejidi, precisely. Mm -hmm. 
there is a neighboring village in my in my village called is here is here the town now okay it is said rumor has it i don't know whether it's true i don't know whether it is fiction i don't know whether mm. but it is said that a woman from my place yeah. it, it was married to an ACA man okay and the woman was maltreated terribly terribly okay. maltreated mm. and this woman that was terribly maltreated so i'm telling this story to tell you how it is related to um the moabite and the israelites yes she was terribly maltreated and in anger she returned back to the his father's land and lay a course oh. that none of her daughter none of yeah. the individual who marry and they say man mm-hmm. if they do what happened to her in this year what happened to them how many people run with that information and all of those things yeah. how many people will just work for what they want to do then i fell in love with an ACA woman as a, as a teenager <laughs> <laughs> and then um, they narrated the story to me and i told them well, i don't know the woman she's not my mother mm. she's not related to me i yeah, whatever she is she lay in court i have detached myself from the court because anything that does not empower me i do not stay with you i do not believe it mm. i said mm. by the way she spoke to the women she said, i'm a man like a mother and a woman over the time we've seen on few occasions see some guys in our place married to women from that place. But for mm. me, I, I, I broke myself from that group. So I'm saying that mm. as it is those days in Moab and Israel, it is in Nigeria. So there's nothing new. There's nothing special about some of those mm. incidents that we are seeing. Now back to the book of Ruth. I just use that as a background of my, of, of my conversation. Naomi was a fantastic mm. mother in law. True. Fantastic, fantastic mother-in-law. That is the reason why two women me, want to leave their culture, mm-hmm. want to leave their people and follow you. You know, we don't talk about Opa. We are focused on Ruth alone. That's right. That's right. We usually forget Opa, her. Opa didn't want to leave Ruth. Opa didn't want to leave Naomi. Mm-hmm. Marriage is still dead to us part. Even though those days, when you are married to a family and your husband died, they give you to and uh, to give you to the sibling of the of your yeah. husband or the relative of your husband. Mm-hmm. That was the norm, don't you? And I will understand why Opa will not or uh, Ruth will not just stand up to go and marry another people, another man. Yes. Mm-hmm. They have to stay with their mother-in-law. But their mother-in-law have no son. The culture those days is if your in-law, the family are married to have no son or relative willing to marry you, you are bound, they are bound to release you to go and marry. So sure. they stayed with, the, with, with their mother-in-law, fantastic mother-in-law, and they were willing. You know, Ru- now me telling Ruth and Opa not to follow her anymore was the second thought. That was not the initial, initial plan because the Bible says they were prepared to go together. Mm-hmm. Maybe the morning they were to leave, the died with it. Now me now sat down. And I say, my, my daughters. First, now me has considered them a daughter because the Bible severally said that you call them daughters, not daughter in law. True. True. So the first letter True. I would get to you, I, I, I call from you that when you are when we marry, you are not just married to your husband alone. You are married to the family. When you yep. marry, you are not married to the wife alone, you are married to the family. So, I, I read the book. I, I don't know whether the book is here. I, I, I should have brought the book out in my life. The title of the book is I Am Married to You, Not Your Family. Very interesting, fantastic book. Mm. I Am Married to You, Not Your Family. Interesting and fantastic book. So, we must understand that even in those days, it is not just African things. When you are married, you are married to a full family. So, in Yoruba culture, they call it Yawawa, Yawawa. So, my my younger brother's wife sees my wife as yale yale in yoruba culture for example is if i'm polygamous and i marry five wives 
the first wife is considered yale to other wives. Mm -hmm. That means the mother of the house. So my younger siblings' wives who address my own wife as yale because they mm -hmm. consider themselves married to me. Mm -hmm. So the same thing it was in the Bible, in the in in the in Moab and in in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Now the mother has considered them daughters. So he looked at it that it will be wickedness on her part because she does she has left as as a city for a very long year. It will be wickedness and has to follow me. I will give you husband waiting for you. They may not be husband waiting for them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> now we have integrity to say that you know what? It doesn't make sense for you guys to follow me. And that was the right thing to do. She she put herself, if this were my daughter, will I say they should follow me when their husbands are dying are dead? And I don't even know I, I'm not certain of what I'm going to meet at home. Mm -hmm. So he told he told them, you know what, relax, don't no need to follow me. You are free to go and marry. Don't leave your people because the distance between Moab and Ephata, where they came from, <laughs> is a very long distance. So he told them, don't follow me. And the both of them refused. They said, no, we are going to follow you. And that was the right thing. A, a responsible, cultured, mannered, trained woman, even if our mother said, don't do this, and you know that the mother is just saying it just for, for saying. The first, your first <laughs> approach is to say, I'm coming now, no, now, let me do it. Uh, your, yeah. At least your mama, even if you're at the back of your mind, you don't want to do it, at least show concern, pretend. Mm -hmm. Like you want to do it. Mm -hmm. So the two girls said, No, mommy, we are going to follow you. We are not leaving you because you have been kind to us. You have been good to us. Yeah. Yeah. You have been nice to us. I remember a, a, a verse in, in the chapter one said that Naomi said, Even after the death of my children, you people were kind to them in death and you were kind to me. True, true. Yes, sir. You were kind to them, you were kind to me. So he, he advised them to go back. When they mm. when he, he insisted was why Opa went back. That means Opa was mm. not wrong for going back. Opa didn't do anything wrong for withdrawing. Opa should not be we should not, not say because now we followed. Opa did not follow. Opa is a bad person. Mm. The Bible didn't have record of what happened to Opa afterwards. But well, for all I care, Opa could have lived even a better life. True. True. Fact. Because she was a very nice daughter in law to the woman. The woman had yeah. after that. Then back to Ruth. Ruth followed. And Ruth said, Ruth is, is, is a fantastic woman. She said that your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Your land will be my land. What Ruth was simply saying that I am ready to Learn your culture. Yeah. You know? When Marlon and Shillion were married to Ruth and Opa, it was not recorded that they started practicing Judaism. No. no. Because now we said, now we told them, go back to your people, go back to your gods. Go to your gods. And the god, was, god. the god was the god of the god of was obeyed, right? But yes, the yes. same but, and that's the god of the Moabites. Yes. Which Elijah yes. had issues with. Yes. He says stay with your God. It means that they probably didn't even change their, their religion. They didn't change. So now I mean, I am going to follow your God. Which is different from the God that I know. That means I'm mm. ready to learn your culture. I'm ready to know how your people behave. Because when they were in Moab, despite the fact they were people from Judah, there is a mixture of Moabites because they cannot just bring their culture and start influencing the Moabites. They cannot just change it, mm -hmm. what is obtainable in the land. Emotional intelligence or social, or social cultural intelligence tells you that if you are in Rome, behave like people of the Rome. Mm -hmm. Even as you are, you are in Ibadan, you are in Yoruba land. There are some things that is obtainable in Isha that you cannot do in Ibadan. True, definitely. Because you live in Ibadan, you have to learn the culture of the people and behave like the Ibadan people. Because if you not behave like them, that's when you start having trouble. 
ti a eh omo ale lati lati ilu awon obi ni o fe o fe gba lu wa lowo won ti take our land so i'm sure that now me for for them to have allowed me to have stayed long for them to have allowed me to have married their daughters now me and the husband must have behaved like the people there too even though they have yeah. obtained their 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 fancy town their culture they probably they must have blended their they blended they probably do not worship their gods but they know what is obtainable so they look at all of this culture we can practice this we can do this we can do that we can do that so when you were going back to to their land to do that to Bethlehem, he told them go back to your god stay with yeah. them and don't say your god will be my god your people will be my people you everything and that is high level of commitment romance relationship is basically commitment i have yeah. committed to yeah. stay with you i have committed to live with you and i have i'm committed to be loyal so and she followed through with her word she said my mother-in-law you are nice to me i'm ready and another lesson i want us to pick quickly i don't know if i'm running too fast maybe you are getting more Please, questions right on me. continue sir continue once the, once people have questions they can drop in the comment section i'll pick it and it's like there's a device that is speaking out around you that is echoing back okay. one minute please one no minute. problem no problem so just help us put up the device that is uh making the echo and the rest uh Apostle, like his fondly called, has just been sharing some amazing things. You know, while I was studying the Book of Ruth, I did not pay attention to that part of the cultures of people blending into culture. You know, you come into a place and the people allow you to marry their daughters, right? They allow you that as a stranger to marry their daughters. It's you must have shown that you're part of them. You must have shown that you love them, you accept them, and the rest. Okay. Apostle is back. I don't know if it, does this is this still going. Um, I was still hearing myself. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, I'm still hearing myself. But I, I I'm not hearing myself. Here, yes, I maybe there's a why. device there. Maybe there's a device that is speaking out. Put, so your microphone is speaking it too much. I have put on my device. I don't know why it is um like that. I don't even have to pass in with that table. Um. Okay, that's fine. Let's continue. We'll, we'll, we'll be following. Can it be managed? Can it be managed? Yes, it can be managed. Okay. So where did I stop? I, I lost my line of thought. You, you, you were talking about the blending of the culture. Naomi. Was that was that was <laughs> Naomi uh, blending to the culture of the Moabites, the Na Naomi and Eli Melek. They, they blended. Now, I want to bring another point. You know, we are used to marriage is where the husband is usually older than the wife. Yeah. And we think that is the standard. You know, some ladies will not say, ah, I cannot be older than my husband, though. I cannot be older than my husband. Now he rightly said, while he was talking to Ruth and Opa to convince them to go back, he said, I am an old woman. I don't have younger sons that you can marry. It means that the if she had younger sons, Opa and Ruth may probably be older than them. Now say, or oh, even if I can get pregnant now, will you people not stay unmarried? For ways to marry the children. It means that if she can get pregnant, it means that they will stay unmarried for the next probably 17 to 18 years to marry those ones. It means that combine that with their age, the wizard number of age to be older than the boys. So it means that from time immemorial, age has never been a factor in marriage. I cannot hear you again, sir. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I, I deliberately muted. I can hear you loud and clear. So, age was never a factor. Whether the woman is older, whether the man is older, whether it is 10 years different, whether it is 5 years different, whether it is 2 years different, it didn't matter. It is civilization. 
uh, maybe some cultural value of other people that makes us mm -hmm. believe that man has to be five years older or ten years older yeah, or two years older or even me. Myself and my wife, we are born the same age. She was she's still much older than me. And we didn't care, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. And I can list some people, Daddy Atalade, the wife is probably five, six years older than 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 him. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter P Square, the wife is about ten years older than him. The wife did his first birthday. He was just in his second birthday. The president of France. President of France married the school teacher. Jimmy Terry, the wife is older. Mm -hmm. So, since time in memory, we must understand that as long as you are ready to be committed, you are ready to mm -hmm. be loyal, that's mm -hmm. the most important thing. No matter what it is, marriage can happen. And it can be so sweet. It can be so sweet. I don't want to jump into chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. I just want to stay into the, with this chapter one, so that oh, it sure. can flow. That is whoever, whoever that is coming after me can just continue to flow and be that. I don't want to enter into their own topic on how yes. because of commitment, you know, and loyalty. Ruth, that was the Moabite, <laughs> became the great grandmother. Of David, whose yeah. lineage Jesus came from. It means mm -hmm. that our generation of young people, we do not, we do not even know the meaning of commitment. It takes a lot of commitment to leave your people mm -hmm. and go to another land. This is not just ethnicity. This is race, a full-blown race. Sure. It's like money. I, I, let me use myself as an example. I'm a Yoruba boy from Kwara State. I have mm -hmm. lived all my life in Lagos. All my life in Lagos. Then, a lady came into my life. And in the space of how many months, I told myself, when I check the pros and cons, when we sat down and discuss the possibility of the kind of family we want to build, mm -hmm. I left I mean, as at the time I was living in Lagos, if you mention the first three family life coach in Nigeria at that time, my name will pop up. And Definitely. I was in number three. Then, and Lagos was the biggest market. Yes. Exactly. Because definitely once we are talking, about uh, family life coaches who always want to talk about apostle and of course to today i see the of our biggest cancer list to come from lagos so once i cancel love uh, wherever you are you want to just know where is your market coming from to today my market is still from lagos abuja and okay fairly from Port Harcourt, right? But the biggest market of it, or when it comes to counseling, for those of us who are counseling and therapists, we, it's still Lagos. Lagos still remains the big, biggest market of it. And to talking about, when you are talking about the age disparity and the rest, uh, I've started paying attention to many of, many people who they are married to women who are older than them. And I was also open to marrying a lady that was older than me. I remember saying that I could marry a woman who was not more than three years older than me. That was fine. I just, I, I kept it at three years. But over time, I looked at myself, even if she was more than three years older than me, I would have seen it as a big deal, right? My wife is how many years younger than I am? She's four years younger than I am, and she's the youngest person ever that I dated, like the youngest person ever. In fact, I usually would even say, just love BPK, I did it. So, because I was not used to relating and connecting with people that were younger than me. And if you follow what Apostle has been saying, which is coming back to join us, there's something interesting that we need to see from people who are in the Middle East that we can apply to our reality. I always hear young people say, no, I cannot do arranged marriage. I cannot do arranged marriage. But, but the thing about it is that if my father wanted to choose a wife for me, for example, because there was a time I was open to that when I was not choosing someone and I was open to my family recommending, I just told myself that 
my father would not choose somebody who is bad and terrible for to uh for me to be a spouse, right? And, and so these are some of some of the things that get to happen. Welcome back, sir. Forgive me, my my iPhone just suddenly got very hot and it went off by itself. No, no problem, sir. But we understand. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, where was I again? Forgive me. Now you are talking about the fact that when we are, if we uh, as at the time you are getting married, if you are listing the top three uh, biggest family coaches in Nigeria, yes. you definitely fall around um, one, two, three. And again, you were in Lagos, which happened to be the biggest market, the biggest and which is also the big yeah. to today, to the biggest market when it comes to everything so counseling it and the therapy. Biggest market when it comes to our business. Mm -hmm. Then I sat down. Mm -hmm. I have no family in Delta State, no single one that I know of. <laughs> and I pack all my load. Packed all my load. And say so I'm coming to, to the big heart. To the big heart, the big heart well, the big heart. <laughs> I'm coming here to stay. And when we we'll show up in Lagos, yeah, I will go and do and I'll go and do all of those things. I I left certainty for uncertainty. Yeah. And I, I, I had to blend, I had to learn the culture, I had to I had to behave like that. You know, when I came in, my wife. You know, Mingwa is a very serious matter in, in Urubu land. Like, if you greet an Urubu man in English language, to him, you are disrespectful. Even if you honor him. But if you tell him Mingwa, you are the most respectful guy. If you tell him Mingwa now and slap him later, you are still respectful. But if you tell him, good morning, sir, and you are very cultured, you have disrespected him. I have to learn all of those things. I have to blend. I have to do all of those things. And all of that. Now, I'm intending returning to Lagos. Because my coming to Delta was just for a short while. We have a number of years that want to do that. Now, the years are coming close. They're going back to Lagos fully. What I'm saying is that it takes a level of commitment to leave everything that I was doing. To come and sure. see that I'm not just sitting down. Oh, I'm, I'm, I still frequent Lagos and still do all my stuff in Lagos and all of those things. But I'm saying mm. I will lose many things from living. Mm -hmm. So many of our generational people, uh, maybe in my generation, they will never do sort something like that. They are yeah. because we do not know what romance is commitment to. Beyond all of those, I love you, I meet, I like you, I small, I want to marry you. If committee, it is only commitment that will not make you cheat on your partner. Because you are going to meet somebody finer than your babe. You are going to meet somebody. I've already met. Your, you are going to meet somebody cuter than your boo. You are, as I am here, I'm still crushing on. on I, I see a woman I'm crushing on. Despite the fact that I'm happily married, happily married, I mean, there's this 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 period of my life is the most beautiful period of my life. I see how people I'm crushing on, and my wife knows them. Can you roll and walk forever be my I, I, I will confuse when I see her physically? <laughs> <laughs> but it is commitment to my wife that will not make me go and meet her. So if you don't understand commitment in little things, it is commitment that will not make you cheat. It's not another thing. Because if you don't understand commitment, one guy will come, one lady will come. They may not be as even fine as your husband, may not be as rich as your husband. They may just have sweet words in mouth. They may just have, they may just be telling you some love language that you don't even know that you have. You not be thinking, where, was, where, where, where were you all my life? It is where were you all my life that made Boaz fell in love with? <laughs> I, I said I don't want to go, I don't want to go into all of those things. It is where were you all True. my life that made Boaz fell in love. So we must we must understand we must understand that romance is basically a matter of commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Simple.
I think I, 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 will, I, will open, I will open the ground for questions. If you have any questions for me, you know, we, can, we can take it up from there. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you have shared. Uh, it's been... It's just been amazing. For those who are watching, those who are following right now, please drop your questions if you have questions that you want to drop. And while Apostle was sharing, I, I picked up some things, right? I picked up some things regarding the family, Elimelech's family, Naomi, their two sons, and Ruth, and how we can apply it to our lives, right? And last time I was talking about how even when it comes to arranged marriage, that there are people who have arranged marriage, like they never knew the guy, they never knew the baby, and they are having a great marriage. Why? Because they had the right mindset. They had the proper mindset that, see, it is about being committed to somebody. What makes marriage work, what makes marriage tick is being committed to somebody, be committed to the values of marriage, be committed to what make marriage work, right? And, and now... There's something I want us to get clearly. Apostle um, tried making that clear to us, and I want us to get it clearly so that we do not miss it, right? People, I've heard pastors teach that uh, Elimelech and his family, they left, the, they left Bethlehem, they left a good place to go to uh, Moab where they now found where they suffered all the issues that they suffered. But this is it. The reason why I don't want you to follow that theology is that when they left Bethlehem for the land of the Moabites, there were people in Bethlehem who died. So there's nothing wrong in relocating with your family. There is nothing wrong. It was not because they relocated, that was why they died. No, it was not it. Abraham relocated right even when he was at the promised land a time came he had to move to egypt you get the picture now so it's not that is not um so that you don't start thinking oh maybe if i relocate with my family now evil will be for me evil will be for us and the rest no that's not what that scripture is all about there's nothing in all of Ruth chapter one for us to infer that from right then again, for those who are relocating, there's still something I wanted to learn and understand from Ruth chapter one, that you should be open to having your children marry from the culture and from the tribe where you find yourself. See, if you can live in the midst of these people, if you can leave your own country, if you can leave your own home and go to these people's land, it automatically means that these people are good enough as spouses to your children. My dad always taught me that, and he will say it again and again that you choose a spouse from where you live. He does not understand why, for example, I should, if I were single and I'm in Ibado, then I'll go and choose a spouse from Zanfara. The question would be, how did I choose that spouse from Zanfara? How did we connect, right? There is no rule, there is no law that says you must marry from your village, you must marry from your country, you must marry from your tribe. And I'm saying this now to those who are single, first to those who are single, that there's every possibility that the reason why you are still single is because you are not open-minded to marry people who are not from your tribe, who are not from your nationality. Like... Some of you are following us right now from the UK, from Canada, from Australia, from other places. It does not make sense. I will say this as a family law lawyer. It does not make sense for you to leave that country to come back to Nigeria to find a wife or to find a husband. Does not make. See, it also, apostle, it also does not even make sense for you to be in that country and be looking for a fellow Nigerian to marry. It makes no sense because. Let me give an example. I have, I have, mm -hmm. I have um, somebody very close to me who has been having troubles getting married and is of age. I mean, he's close to his 40s. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, he lives in Lagos. He's from, mm -hmm. he's, he's from the southeast. He lives in Lagos. It means that because Lagos is a Yoruba land, there's every tendency mm -hmm. that he will meet more Yoruba than he will meet more Igbos. That's the first thing you must know. Number two, Lagos has become the orb of everybody. Everybody is migrating to Lagos. 
There's every candidate that will meet people from other tribes mm -hmm. than his kinsmen. So he met somebody from South South. He's from the South East. He met somebody from the South South. I said, I want to marry them. He took the person home. The parents said, No way. If it is not from South East, yeah, in fact, not just from, if it's not from our village, no way. Then that one left because once one of the parents he allowed this slide. Then another lady came from the same south south, the same village of <laughs> the first one. Another one. And because of the first experience, he tried to convince the parents and all of that. They still say no. Hmm. Now, the mom hmm. now brought so it's, it's somebody from their village for him to marry. If you don't like that one, I became it became trouble. Now they are getting very old. The parents, I mean, they are getting very old. They are not asking him to bring anybody in life. And he's saying, "I am not interested in marrying again." Oh shit! <laughs> bad, bad, do bad. They are, they, are, they, are, they are having issues. See, I'm not mm. just, I want to take my time now. The two people who I fell in love madly with, they are not, the two of them are not married. Me, I'm here, single. Now, because you think you are going to die anytime soon. Mm. By all means, you don't want me to just marry anybody. No, I want to take my time because I'm not been able to fall in love again after them. Mm. They must understand. I, I want to believe that this, our generation, they are open minded to even do intertribal, interracial marriage. But mm. remember, I said, when you are getting married, you are not just getting married to the person you are married to, you are married to the family. Mm. So, because the customary law have made it compulsory that you need the consent of your parents as an African to get married. Mm. Yeah. So, it means that you have, to be, you have to convince them, slow them down, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, again, when most of you, I, I tell people, there are five conditions you have to meet to get married. The first condition is physical completeness. It means that it must not be a child. A child is anybody below the age of 18. Also, a child is anybody that cannot take responsibility and decision for himself or herself. So if you still have to consult your parents, consult them for decision, then you are a child, no matter irrespective of how old you are. Then number two, emotional completeness. You must be emotionally stable. Understand emotional intelligence because you need a lot of emotional intelligence in marriage. Then number three is financial completeness. Be making money no matter how small. Don't be a liability. Make have a source of income no matter how small. Even if it's thirteen thousand, five thousand, I'm making it in the most. Because I tell people the condition I have placed on myself for marriage is that I'm able to feed myself. Yeah. And the person coming into, into my life is able to feed herself. Then both of us, we put our resources together. We are going to be able to feed ourselves. Financial completeness. Then number four is social completeness. You must be sociable. You want to have friends, be friendly with people, make friends, be friends with other people, understand culture and all of those things. Then number five, spiritual completeness. You mm -hmm. must know God for yourself. You must be able to ident identify. If it's if it's a uh, juju you want to worship, you must understand the juju very well. <laughs> then you must let I add extra, let me add extra one. Number six one. Is what I call intellectual completeness. You must have sense. Simple is as simple as that. So, when you have this, this level of condition, you are a complete human being. It means that when it's time to choose life partner, you can say, you can make good and say, I'm ready to choose. Then, when you're having parental issue and all of those, they are trying to convince them and all of those things and all of those that you can have a full star parent that can endorse it. Mm -hmm. And you are, you are, you are married. Mm -hmm. Because the condition you need to meet as an African is going with a bright price, going with something. And if you, have, you are able to do that, and there's a representative that is collecting that. Yes. Traditionally, you are married. Then, if tradition is saying that it is, they are having only cocoon, they are doing stubbornness, go and do court marriage, and you are still married. Yeah. As long as there's somebody that is consenting to 
to your marriage. Mm -hmm. It is legal. Customary and legally. It is legal. Yeah. So I just thought yeah. that you keep it as But for you to be able to have the stamina and sense to make that decision, you have to be a complete human being. Be able to make True. decisions. Be able True. to finance yourself. Be able to feed yourself. Because if they feed you, they are going to be determining what they are going to do for you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I've I'm met telling you. people that are marriageable age and their family are still telling them you are not ready. And they believe they are, they are not ready. So because of that, their relationship is breaking because my family is telling me I'm not ready. I don't think you are not ready. So you're not ready. You're you are not an adult. You're not an adult, no matter how old you yeah. are. Thank, thank you so much for thank you so much for that input. You know, there's also another part to to the story of upper and roots that many of us still need to understand. Um. I remember my dad. My dad is a pastor, so I've heard him make this complaint. I've also heard some older people make this complaint, so I decided to take it serious. And I decided to say, okay, maybe there's something actually here that I need to pay attention to. I have seen, we are beginning to have, live in a time where ladies don't want to say yes to some guys because their mom is still alive. So it's not mm -hmm. like <laughs> one of the things that make you uh, a spec. One of the things that makes you high profile for marriage as a single guy is that your mom is dead. But mom now, <laughs> yes, your mom is dead. So they, they want to check, does, does he still have mother? How many sisters does he have? And people mm. are... You have not even met the person you want to marry. And I'm looking at it from the perspective of the ladies. You have not even met the person you want to marry. You are already psychologically preparing for battle. Like, I'm going to have issues with my mother-in-law. I'm going to have issues with my sister-in-law. My brother-in-law may try to control me. But now, I'm looking at it from the side of... You know, we saw it first from the side of Naomi saying... These two people are now her daughters. But I want us to look at it from the side of these daughters who decide to marry these guys. And they're like, we are ready to be deep into you. Like, deep into your family, deep into your culture, deep into your religion, deep into the way you do things. That was the reason why when Naomi wanted to go back, these ladies knew that, see, we can easily continue this life. We can easily still live with you as your daughters. And, and Ruth can say, see, your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Your land will be my land. Because you already have this attitude of, I call it adaptability and flexibility. Your, your ability to adapt to a people and be flexible to relationship with them. What what do you have to say regarding that, sir? Thank you for, for bringing that in. That, that, that escaped my mind while I was talking initially. You know, the issue of women, especially mm -hmm. my mother, I don't, I don't want mother in law to be alive. And the question <laughs> I keep asking myself, one day you are going to be a mother in law too. And then um, your daughter, you will die. Daughter -in -law will die, will die before they marry. So, so if you want friends, you have to be friendly. Sure, sure. There are ways, there are ways you can win the heart of people to your side. Sometimes, yeah. some mothers, because of too much love to their sons, you know, there is this mm -hmm. psychology that um, mothers are closer to their sons, fathers are closer to their, closer to their daughter. Even mm -hmm. from childhood, Sigma Freud. You, see the daughter, yeah. you see the daughter dragging the father with the mother. They, uh, daddy, they will come in between you and all of that. The same thing, daughters, um, mothers and sons. So, and and, and I have, as a psychologist, I have come and I drafted an hypothesis. I say every son needs a girlfriend in his life who wants everything for them and nothing from them. The same thing, every every daughter needs a boyfriend in their life who wants everything for them. Oh, sorry. And it's like...
Tabii ki. Şey. Can you hear me? Okay, right on. Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. I'm saying that every song need a girlfriend in their lives that want everything for them mm -hmm. and nothing from them. Every daughter need a boyfriend in their life that need that wants everything for them and nothing from them. And that first girlfriend to the son must be the mother. And that first boyfriend to the daughter must be their father. They will set the standard mm. at which their children will not begin to choose from. For many times, because of our too much mm. love, mothers too much love for their son, they tend to want to overprotect their son. And yeah. begin to get afraid that somebody will come into their son's life and share that love with them. Mm, mm. And in their own bid to protect their own territory, they don't know when they will become hostile to the women in their son's life. Sure. You got it. Because they don't know. It is the, the thing they are protecting their son. Especially when before the son marries you, Maybe the son was giving them fifty thousand naira monthly stipend. Then when the son now get married to you, because he now have more responsibility, he has reduced the fifty thousand to twenty thirty thousand naira. <laughs> the mother is not thinking. Before my son married, as he came into his life, as he came into his life, he have cut all my allowances. Before he marries you, he visits the mother every Sunday. He's not married mm. to you. He makes it once a month. The mother feels threatened. You are taking my son away from me. Mm. I blame the son and I blame the mother also. True. How do I blame True. the son? I, 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 I cancel a guy who gives everything to his mom. I mean, absolutely everything. His mother is his everything. So when he came to me with his fiance, fiance, fiance wants to get married, I asked him, before he, before that, I told him, I said, I'm not saying you should not give your mother out, but when you are going to get married, the level of gift you are giving your mother now, when you get married, we used to, we used to be able to sustain it. He said, no. I said, start cutting it now. Because when you get married, your mother will say to the woman that brought you, that he brought, that made you cut it, and your mother will not be a rival to your wife. Mm. He thought, um, he thought I was overdoing it, that I was telling him not to take care of his mother. Then something happened to him. He got, um, he lost his job. He couldn't afford to give the mother the level of things he was giving. And the mother kept demanding. He said, Mommy, I don't have a job. The mother kept demanding. He said, Mommy, I don't have a job. I cannot give you a gift. Then he got a new job that was paying him less than what he was paying. He started what was paying him before? He started giving the mother back, but not as much as he used to. So I called him when he brought his fiancée. I said, now, see what happened to you in the space of three years. You were giving your mother this much. You couldn't afford to give her at the time. Now you are giving her less. Now you are bringing this woman to your life. It means that the money will reduce for that. So hmm. you need to start practicing and let your mother understand this. So that it will not cause trouble for you in your marriage. The mother too must understand that the moment your husband, your son is living or your daughter is living, they are starting an entire new nation. This is how I say family. Family is like country. In, 19, in year 2001, President of Obasanjo and Pobia of Cameroon signed a treaty. 25 local governments in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria, and Adamawa, Taraba, the federal government in Adama and Taraba will leave Nigeria and some states in Cameroon will leave Cameroon. Both states, that means those federal local governments in Nigeria and those states in Cameroon, they will come together and form a new country called United Nations of Cameroon. If, I, if, my, if my, my, my memory serves me right, it's called United Nations of Cameroon. They signed it in 2001. This is 2023. 22 years after the country has not been established yet, 
but it is already a law that the country must exist. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think Abubakar's local government is part of the country. I don't know if you are familiar with politics in 2019. The FPC yeah. needs to contest to, to tackle Abubakar. I think that he cannot, he's not eligible to contest because his local government is going to leave Nigeria to the United Nations of Cameroon. They, are, they sue him to court for that. He to won today, to the to today. See, today, see the, you know, there's the argument that it's not a Nigerian, that it's a Cameroonian. Yeah. Because of this country, that Obasan, because of this law that Obasan just signed. But unfortunately for them, they cannot win the case because the country has not been established yet. And they have to be a member of the country. So it's still a Nigerian. Now, why has the country not started? Representatives from most local governments are putting pen to paper. They are writing, they are creating their own constitution. They are writing their own laws. Because the 25 local governments from Nigeria cannot say they want to go to that country and say, this is how we used to do it in Nigeria, and it must be, it must be like that here. The mm -hmm. Cameroonians will not say this is how we used to do it in Cameroon, and it must follow. Everybody needs to be represented. So, laws and constitutions are being, being made, are still being made for the country to, mm -hmm. to, to exist as one. Mm -hmm. So, back to family. So, the husband, the man is living a nation. The woman yeah. is living another nation to start a brand new nation that have never existed. Mm. It means that laws and rules and culture and constitutions will be created by both of them. Yeah. To say, this is how we will be doing it here. This is how we will, be, we, will be, we will live in this nation. Because if it is not done, if the man has said, this is how we used to do it in the uh, Adedoi family. The woman will say, mm. this is how we used to do it in the Benudis family. There's a problem already. That's right. So we have to ask him, how do we do it in this new nation that we are going to start? And whatever we agree is what is obtainable. Also, no, put him at the back of your mind that if there is something obtainable in the nation that you are coming from, whenever you are visiting them, you follow the rules of the nation. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I told somebody who brought his fiance, the guy, the woman, uh, sorry, the guy is from, um, I think, deeper life. The woman is from Regime. So, okay. it's from a Regime church that wears trousers. She's from a Regime okay. church that allows women to wear trousers. And the guy is a deeper lifer. So, the fiancé wore trousers to go and pay, to go and visit the would be mother in law, who is a deeper lifer. And she was not accepted. And the son was angry. Why would you not accept my fiance? Why would you not? I said, no, you are foolish. And I, I said, foolishness is not a cause. It's a state of mind. The state of the yes, mind at that time was... A yes, description. You a state of foolishness. You know the culture of this land. You were not going into that land breaking their laws. What do we do to people that break the law of our land? We treat them as we treat those immigrants and we send them away from our land. You are an immigrant and you have been deported mm -hmm. from the land. So, and anybody that consistently breaks the law of our land and wants to impose another law to our land, they are considered terrorists. And what do we do to terrorists? We keep terrorists. We don't we don't we don't suffer terrorists to leave. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened to you is that you were not uh, religiously co uh, conscious to say that this is a deeper life of family. I have to look like them to be accepted. When I'm mm. in Rome, I believe like people of Rome. And that mm. was what Ruth and Opa did. When Ruth got to the land of Bethlehem, back, that was what she did to be accepted by the people of, of Naomi. To say that, no, this one is mm. a different guest. It was well conscious. We will not treat her like a foreigner. Will treat her like one of our own. So, for your mother-in-law to accept you as a daughter, you must behave like a daughter. That's right. A mother-in-law, too. For your daughter-in-law to accept you as a mother, you must behave like your mother. So, when all of this problem is solved, you will see that the problem of my mother-in-law should die, or my son should not marry a particular girl. You stop. Daughter, daughter-in-law should begin to treat their mother-in-law like mother.
I don't call my mother-in-law mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is considered my mother. The same level of love I give to my mother is the same level of love I give to my mother-in-law. What whatever gift I'm giving to my mother, I'm giving the same to my mother-in-law. This whatever gift I'm giving to my father is the same gift I'm giving to my father-in-law. The same thing, my wife. Whatever gift my wife is giving to her mother, she gives to my mother too. Whatever gift she gives to her father, when my father was alive, she gives to her father. So my father consider my father would say, Ah, oh, she, she's a good girl. Means that they have accepted her as a daughter, and she has accepted yeah. them as a parent. So, and that is why they are living peacefully. So, daughter in law would be daughter in law to see your mother in law as a mother and treat her so well. If no matter how your mother, no matter how you don't like the behavior of your mother, you still love her. Of course. <laughs> so, the same thing should happen to your mother in law. Your mother, hey, your mother is not. Your mother is not the best mother in the world. Forget all the things I say that my mother is the best. Your mother is not the best mother in the world. There are some things that your mother does that irritates you, that you are mad about. Yet, you see, you see her as the best mother. Mm. You will not yes. need <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, wow. This is already one minute past nine. And I will not want you to keep you longer. Apologies, because we, we promised you that it was going to be one hour, and of course, as a family man, we definitely want you to return back to your wife and to Purity, who wants her daddy's attention uh, and the rest. You know, uh, and why we are saying that something crossed my mind to let everyone know, many of those who are watching this, who are seeing this right now, we are also parents. Many of, us who are, many of those who are single, you'll be parents someday. What kind of parent would you be? And what kind of in-law would you be? That's the question I'm going to ask. Why we, because now Akon is three years old and Kilan is two years old. Someday they want to marry. If they come up to me and they tell me they want to marry from Asia or they want to marry from the Middle East, will I fight them? I have to start preparing right now to say they are free to marry from Romania or they are free to marry even from Madagascar, right? Someday I'm going to be a father-in-law. I'm going to be a father-in-law to two women. What kind of father-in-law will I be? So if you're watching this right now, you may be single, you may be married. Ask yourself, can I be as amazing as Naomi? Can I be as amazing as Ruth? Can I be as amazing as, as Opa? And whatever your decision is, ensure that you are flexible and open. Like Apostle said, there's no rule that says that the woman must be younger than the man. There's actually no rule. In fact, I just realized recently that one of my online mentors, one of the person I get to listen to almost every day, I sh I'm sure I listen to him every day, um, Joda Peterson. His wife is also older than him. And earlier on, we mentioned all, uh, many people who their wives are older than them. So this is what I want to say to you. Be flexible, be adaptable, right? Be open to learn people, to learn their culture, to love them, and to be into them. I want us to stop here. Thank you so much for following. You did not drop your questions, but then subscribe and hit the notification bell because next week we are going to be continuing with this series next today we had matthew femi who is popularly known as apostle and it has been amazing next week tuesday we are having another person matthew joined us today from asaba or, um, with his office in lagos we are going to be having somebody from abuja join us next week uh, ll joe She's uh, Jennifer Amunene. She's joining us next week. She's going to be our guest next week. So I want you to subscribe right now. Hit the notification bell so you know all the times that we go live. Right? And share this with your friends. Drop comments. Ask questions. If you, if you want counseling, if you want to contact us, you can use the details um, rolling on your screen right now to join us and to be part of this. We do this every Thursday, 8 p.m. here. Thank you so much, Apostle, for joining us. Thank you so much for honoring us. Thank you so much for, for being part of this. You have always been there. If you remember, right from those days when we used to do the Twitter Hangouts, 
for you to do Twitter yeah. Twitter chats <laughs> and, and the rest. Is that true? Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Twitter, Twitter has now become a different phase entirely today. I'm when, telling you. Those days when Twitter was insane. Yes, when Twitter was saying we from Twitter we started before WhatsApp came up, before you started doing your programs, before um research, your counseling and uh, therapy, WhatsApp um coaching programs, before research mind came in. And I remember when research mind started, my wife was one of the first first things to take one of your programs. It has yeah. been it has been an amazing journey. And guys, if you are in Asaba or you're in Lagos, you're looking for a therapist, just search for his name, search for uh, Matthew Femi Adedoye and contract him, consult him, hire him, retain him. He is amazing. Thank you so much, sir. Next week, we'll be here again and it's going to be amazing. So, sir, before you go, one final thing, what is the last word you want to say? And after saying that last one, we'll also give you the opportunity to also pray for everyone who is participating. I, I will say, this is what I'm going to say. I will start, I will go back to the beginning. Hmm. Romance is basically commitment. And what commitment means is that doing something for, positive for someone without expecting a thank you. Um, doing something positive for someone without expecting a thank you. So if I'm commit committed to all right, like I was committed mm. to this event, and I was committed mm. without expecting you to pay me, without mm. expecting you to do anything. If you send me money, I will collect. <laughs> mm. But I'm saying Definitely. that the, the, commitment, the commitment means I'm willing to do this thing. Mm -hmm. without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. And what has sustained myself and you is commitment to the relationship. If I need sure. anything now, I, I can just pick up my brother. All right, it's here for me. All right, so I'm coming to pardon. You would mm -hmm. gladly do it without expecting anything from me. That is commitment. Mm -hmm. So Noah and Naomi was committed to the, to the ladies. And the ladies in return yeah. were committed to her. That was how they had a yeah. beautiful relationship. That was how they had a beautiful relationship. So, parents, stay committed to your, your, your children. Spouses, stay committed to your marriage. When you are committed, your commitment will guide you. Yeah. And your commitment, it will be the decider for your reason for getting married. Mm. Because if you, your reason, if you don't know the reason why you are getting married, it is very easy to cheat. No matter who you are, if you are a pastor, your reason for getting married will determine whether you are going to cheat on your spouse or not. Many people, mm. they, are, they have not cheated now. Not because they have a good commitment. It's because opportunity to cheat has not come. <laughs> but your commitment will make you stand when even opportunity show up. So, romance is about commitment, and commitment breeds loyalty. So, stay committed. You know, I've not, I've not been talking about love, love, love. I've just been talking about commitment. Because yes. sometimes, you may madly be in love with somebody, and at a second of foolishness, you, forgot, you forget yourself. Jesus was madly in love with us. Then he went to the mount to pray. And he was telling God, take this cup over, take, let this cup pass me by. That means Jesus was not willing to die anymore. But he was in love with mm. us. But his commitment drew him back. He said to himself, he said, no, 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 no. Not my will, Father, let your will be done. It means that at a time, your love may shake. But your commitment mm. will make you stand back, will make you stand. So commitment is key to lasting relationship. And I'll keep I'll stop there. Thank you so thank much. You thank so you. Much. Thank, thank you for that. Just say a blessing to, a blessing to our audience. It's our tradition. It's our tradition. We pray that every word that come out tonight will transform lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. That marriages Amen. will be transformed, will be reformed at every single thing they hear tonight in the name of Jesus. 
that Amen. singles willing to go into marriage, they will not miss it. The right partner will find them, and they will find the right partner in the name of Jesus. That Amen. destiny shall be reverted in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so Thank much. You Thank so you so everyone much. for Thank participating. Everyone. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification there because next week Thursday we will continue with chapter two. And we are going to be having Elijah, uh, but I hope I pronounce her name right, Jennifer. And it's going to be amazing. Thank you, Apostle, for starting this for us. And I'm sure many of you who are participating right now must have learned amazing things you never learned from. Root chapter one. Chapter thank, one. You, Pisayo, thank you, Pisayo. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you. Um, I saw Usayeme. Thank you to everyone who commented. From your sincerely and all right, Ian about Ibado, right? And from Apostle, we say you rock. You rock. You rock. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>